We are in an old growth redwood forest in the Santa Cruz Mountains, which is home to one of the most fascinating and interesting native animals, the banana slug. I'm Daniel Willifort, I'm a state park interpreter here at Henry Cowell Redwood State Park. The banana slug is the unsung hero of this forest community. Without the banana slug, the forest community as we see it here most likely would not be the same. Uh, they are the ultimate recyclers, eating fallen plants and even dead animals. And in turn, they replenish the soil, which these incredible trees need in order to survive, as well as the plants in the understory growing here. So I see a direct correlation with the grandeur and beauty of this old growth redwood forest and the soil replenishing properties that the banana slug give to it. In this area of the Santa Cruz Mountains, we have just one species of banana slugs. On the west coast of the United States, there are three species and two subspecies. And they range from San Diego County all the way up to Alaska in disjointed populations. That's not continuous. Our species here in this part of the Santa Cruz Mountains is the Areolamax dulicophallus. Uh, in that uh, the banana slugs are differentiated by the size of their male genitalia. And this particular uh, banana slug here um, has the largest male sex organ of all known banana slugs. The banana slug is a hermaphrodite containing both uh, male and female sexual organs. A banana slug does need another slug in order to um, lay eggs and produce offspring. The anatomy of the banana slug is very interesting to observe. As you come upon a banana slug, the first thing you might notice, besides its bright yellow color, are its antenna. Um, there's two of them that are longer, and then they have two shorter ones towards its mouth. The longer ones are its primitive eyes. They see light and dark in movement. As you approach a banana slug and it senses a shadow, it will, you know, kind of retract those. And its two littler antennae are for smelling and for feeling. And the sense of smell in a banana slug is reportedly very acute. They can smell all kinds of things, especially their meals, from a far distance away. And their mouths are quite fascinating as well, and they're located right near those bottom antennae. They're a rasping radula, razor sharp, going along and kind of making pulp out of what they eat, and then slurping it up and passing it through their system. And another thing that you might see towards its head in those antennae is a mantle. That's what it's called. It's kind of an internal remnant of a shell. The banana slug is a mollusk, believed to evolve from the sea. That's kind of their connection to snails is that mantle that they have that may serve some sort of protection. It's actually covering up their breathing hole, their waist, you know, anus, and then their genital openings as well. The banana slug moves in a very interesting way. The slime actually makes the path for it to kind of glide along and then the, the muscles kind of ripple, kind of like a wave effect, and it's a one big muscle, muscular foot that's moving it along. You could see those ripples happening. It's, it's quite fascinating. It's very interesting, the coloring of the banana slug. It's bright yellow. You would think that it would stick out as you walked along the path but there are some leaves here in this forest, the California bay tree for one, that has a very similar shape to the banana slug and is yellow. I've been fooled many a time by that. Banana slugs are edible. They're a tough meal, but animals do eat them. I had the great experience of seeing a Pacific giant salamander about 12 inches long, sprawled across the trail, gobbling up a banana slug. And the banana slug, they can get to be seven or eight inches long, when in danger, they shrink up and exude all kinds of slime, which makes it very difficult for their predator to digest. So that slime is a protection. Um, that slime also helps them move along for locomotion. It helps retain water in them. Uh, so the slime is their secret to life. That's what keeps them going. Here in the park, we have a lot of people come in and say, oh, have you ever kissed a banana slug? Or have you licked a banana slug? And my answer is no. Working in the Redwoods as long as I have, I had one occasion to see a gentleman come into the visitor center with a swollen mouth and almost a swollen uh, 
a throat from licking a banana slug. So there is some danger in there. It uh, reportedly gives you a tingly feeling, but I always think of the slug as well. You know, does the slug really want this to happen? Does it want the lips of, you know, countless people coming along and, and kissing it? My guess is no. Generally, when we touch a banana slug, it's drying that banana slug out. So I like to discourage that. I know I'm a party pooper. My favorite thing about the banana slug would be really their appearance and just in the way they move. They kind of have, you know, have an elegance into the way they move. So, um, and the, the awe that they inspire in people who are open to learning about them. They're really one of the um, unsung heroes of the forest.